If you've got a metal lathe, especially one that you want to use for rifle barrel chambering, you need a good outboard spider. Gavin Gear here from makingwithmetal.com. In this video, I want to show you the ultimate outboard lathe spider, how I put it together and how it integrates with my Precision Matthews PM1440 GT. So let me go through the basic features of this spider. Basically, it sits outboard of the left end of the spindle. It's got thumb screws and you can back these thumb screws out and then turn in the screws to whatever positioning they're needed to support the outboard end of a long slender object. And you can do this in two ways. You can have these screws directly contact a long slender object like this rifle barrel or you can put a stock tube through the spindle that is going to support a smaller diameter object. Let's say we had a metal rod that's like a half inch rod like this that's 36 inches long. If you didn't support it, it's going to whip around, fly out of the end of the lathe, and you're going to have a bad day. So multiple reasons to have an outboard spider. This particular lathe did not come with one, so I had to build it myself. Let me tell you that story. So I want to show you probably my favorite feature of this lathe spider, and that is the single bolt pinch clamp arrangement. All I have to do is loosen one screw and this lathe spider comes off. The spider started as a large chunk of drawn over mandrel tubing. This piece right here. It was about five, six inches long and I went through a sequence of several steps to put together this spider. This was the first project that I did on the PM1440 GT and it was the first project that I also used the PM949 TV milling machine for. So a great project to get started with and it was really fun to put this together. So I started with the drawn over mandrel tubing. It was chucked up in the PM1440 GT and I did two operations to start with. Facing the end and turning down the outside diameter. After those steps, I had fresh surfaces on the end and on the outside diameter. I took some precision measurements that I did of the outside diameter of the spindle. This is a two inch through spindle capacity lathe. So this is a large OD for the spindle. And what I did was to counterbore inside the end of the lathe spider body so that I had about two thousandths of an inch of fit there, of tolerance. And if I had it to do over again, I would probably make that a slip fit or maybe one thousandth of an inch because when the spider is rotating, there's a very slight wobble to it. It doesn't matter. It's just something that I see and I think oh, I would have put that together a little bit more tight in terms of tolerances. So I counterboard the end. I chamfered the surfaces. Let me show you that part of the process. So at this point, it was time to take that leap of faith. Everything had been chucked up in the lathe without moving anything to this point. I loosened the lathe chuck, I removed the spider body, and I put the whole assembly in the metal cutting bandsaw. And it was time to hack this baby off. So after cutting off the machined portion, I chucked it back up on the lathe and I faced off the other end. Then it was time to mill the flats for where these thumb screws contact the body of the spider. And so with some careful <laughs> use of parallels and 90 degree squares, 
I milled off each of the flats. Let me show you that. Then I continued to index the body on 90 degree increments. And this would have been easier had I used something like a rotary table, but I was able to get these angles pretty much spot on just by using the surfaces that I had milled. The next step was to drill holes on the four quadrants, and then I power tapped the holes for 3816. Okay, so after I had done all the machine work on the four quadrants uh, on the outboard end of the spider, I moved to the inboard end. And I'd already done the counter bore, and the counter bore created this ring of metal, kind of like a flange on the end. And the way this works is when you tighten the pinch bolt for this, this pinch clamp, it brings the two ears of this ring here along this side together and that clamps on to the outboard surface of the spindle. And what's nice about that is it doesn't mark up the spindle and there's only one bolt to deal with. Love it. So to create this, I started by mounting a slitting saw on the milling machine and I made the primary cut. I then proceeded to take a plunge cut with an end mill to create the flat surface and basically this recess where the hex head sits for this pinch bolt clamp. Okay, so there was a couple more things to do. On this side of the pinch clamp, for the hole, it needs to be slightly larger than the major diameter of the screw. On the other side, it needs to be the minor diameter, the diameter that you need for tapping. So I started by drilling all the way through with essentially the tapping diameter for the hole, and then drilled out the major diameter for the bolt and then ran a tap all the way through which basically was just running right through the first hole without touching it essentially and then tapping the threads on the other side. <laughs>
So with much anticipation, I did a test fit. And what I found was, it works perfectly. Now if I'd done this again, I would probably cut this counter bore maybe a couple thousandths of an inch smaller, so it was kind of a snug fit. There's probably about two thousandths tolerance between the counter bore and the outside diameter of the lathe spindle. Doesn't matter, you can see it very slightly wobble. I mean, talking a couple thousandths of an inch while the lathe is running won't affect the functioning because obviously you're using these screws to center whatever stock tube or material that you're running. But uh, all part of doing this essentially as a prototype of this ultimate lathe spider design. So after I was done with that, I proceeded to work on these thumb screws. And these were just machined from aluminum. I cut a little step on the end and then drilled the hole in the middle, did some power tapping, and then some knurling on the outside. And the knurling doesn't look perfect. I'm, I'm gonna look for a different tool and I think adjust my technique just a little bit. But the intent of the design is that you can use these thumb screws by hand and then you can optionally use something like, say, channel locks to just snug them down. And it's not really necessary. You just don't want these to work their way out. You want them to maintain even pressure on whatever it is that you're clamping in there. Here's the cool part. Okay, so these are 3 8 16 screws, set screws. And, you know, I might go with fine threads. The, the 16 threads per inch totally worked. It had to do with what screws I had on hand in the shop. Uh, the hard part was drilling in the ends of these to make the aluminum tip feature. And I found that the screws were very hard, very difficult to drill through. If I had a carbide drill, that would have really helped, even a very short one, because I only drilled in about a quarter inch or so. And then I took some aluminum round bar, some small diameter, this is like eighth inch, and then epoxied them into the holes that were drilled in the end. And then I very slightly beveled the ends so that they would contact whatever they were securing in kind of an elegant way and were able to tip just a little bit as you go and you dial in barrels. So I, I've seen people do brass tips. My last lathe spider I built, I used brass tip screws. Kind of doesn't really matter. It might depend more on what you have on hand, the aluminum does work really, really well. So that's how the lathe spider went together. Let's take a look at the modifications that I had to do with the side cover of the lathe and how it all comes together. So I had a couple considerations here. I wanted this side cover to come on and off easily and you do need to remove the lathe spider in order to get the side cover off because obviously the thumb screws and the set screws are in the way. I've also got this tray that I fabricated up here and I didn't want to have to remove the tray. So let me take these thumb screws off and show you what I did to the side cover. So the Precision Matthews PM1440 GT has sheet metal all in here when you get the lathe from the factory. And all I had to really do was do a little bit of cutting and remove a band of metal right here to provide enough clearance. And you'll see, even with my tray up top, this comes together real easily and is not a problem to deal with. So I really like the way that all of this came together. This so when I wanna reinstall the spider, I just slip it over the end of the spindle I look at where my Allen screw is. I've got a hole through my tray and the top of the side cover here. I give this a quick tighten and then we're on there. I mean, this is completely solid the way this pinch clamp works. And shift it into gear here. Ideally, we would potentially have a safety guard here or something like that. I'm just really careful about not letting get things to get caught up while I'm running the lathe. And I'm gonna put this in neutral again, okay? And when you go to tighten these set screws, you can either use a notch here that I cut in the top, you can access them from the side. And if I got a, a ball end here, it'd be even easier to go kind of down here at the bottom. So I wanted to keep this 
as short as possible because the shorter the spindle is, this is the shortest spindle on a two inch through spindle capacity 14 by 40 Taiwanese lathe, period, in the US. Nothing else on the market that competes with it. I didn't want to compromise that capability to turn objects that are really short, like a short rifle barrel, and still be able to dial in the outboard end and the inboard end with a, a four jaw chuck, for instance. So I made this low profile and therefore did some of the cutaways and features so that I could keep that distance to kind of an absolute minimum. So I absolutely love the way this thing works. So that's how I built my ultimate lathe spider. And if you wanna build your own, click on that first link in the video description. I have more information on makingwithmetal.com that can help to guide you through that process. And make sure you're subscribed with notifications because I got a lot more lathe fundamental content coming up. I got Mills fundamentals. We're going to be doing more gunsmithing projects like chambering rifle barrels. Lots of fun. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Until next time, happy machining and happy metalworking.